What's up, guys? Welcome back to This Justin. Thank you for joining me today. We got to talk about Genius Sports. This was one of my favorite online gambling and sports betting stocks, guys, and it got absolutely annihilated over the last 30 days. I'm talking down 60-something percent. That's insane. So I wanted to jump on and give you an update, give you my thoughts if it's still a buy in my book and where the price could be going from here. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, before we get started today, subscribe to the channel for me. Remember to hit the little bell. That way you get notified every time I post a new video. There's also a link down in the top pin comment. That's to my Patreon account. Come over and join the family. We've got an awesome community over there. That'll get you access to the private Discord where we talk stocks. You'll be able to check out my high conviction fundamental analysis portfolio. I also send out all of my swing trade setups, which in my opinion is a huge value. Uh, you know, especially for those that are looking to become a swing trader or learn technical analysis. Uh, so whether you're a value investor or you're a swing trader, day trader, technical analysis guru, I think I got what you need over there. Uh, day one squad, I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Uh, the Patreon is the number one way to support the channel. So if you want to do that, I would really appreciate it. Uh, but guys, let's get started. We got to talk about genius sports here. When a stock dumps 60% in 30 days, you can't ignore it. Uh, guys, they posted their earnings report. Investors didn't like it. They got spooked. Uh, you know, the, the EPS got beat down pretty bad, much worse than I think uh, a lot of analysts or you know, a lot of investors were expecting. Uh, the revenue wasn't too bad, but the business operations were actually really good. Uh, you know, the, the all of the online gambling stocks, the sports betting stocks have been getting hit pretty hard. I don't know if it's because the Omnichrome variant or whatever it was, uh, but they were getting beat down. Penn Gaming, DraftKings, RSI, all of them. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, online gambling, sports betting, video gaming, those are my favorite stocks to invest into. Uh, so it makes sense why Genius Sports is up there with them. Now, I did make a video on Genius Sports a little while back where I went like super in depth on the overall company and what they did and why I liked them and their pros and cons. So I will link that above right here. If you want to go check that out, you can do that. Uh, today, we're just going to focus on the, you know, the obvious issue here, uh, the obvious elephant in the room of why Genius Sports dumps so bad. Guys, this is pretty similar to Paysafe. Paysafe was one of my favorite stocks, but, uh, you know, it got wrecked just as bad as Genius Sports did. So uh, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to jump in. I want to just show you the highlight slide from the investor presentation from their Q3 earnings. I want to talk a little bit about some of the analyst expectations and some of the price targets that I've been seeing. And then I want to break down the chart and let you know where the price could be going from here. So let's get started. First thing, guys, this is their, their highlights uh, from their Q3 earnings. So they actually did well on revenue, guys. As you can see here, group revenue was up 70% year over year to 69.1 million. The, the actual beat on revenue, the expectations, uh, they beat by about 6.31 million. So they had a decent beat there on revenue. I don't think it was as much as I thought it was going to be, or even a lot of people thought it was going to be, but that wasn't really the, the issue. The beat on revenue couldn't drown out how bad the EPS was. Uh, they, they missed EPS by like 25 cents, guys. I think they posted negative 37 cents earnings per share, which is not very good. The, the guidance that they issued was higher than previous. However, they are expected to pretty much break even uh, for the next couple of years, I think until the end of 2022 at least. Now, I want to highlight something, guys. I've seen a lot of analysts that are, you know, expecting them to do like 345 million in revenue in 2022, which if they meet that would be like 53% year over year growth. I've seen other analysts that aren't that optimistic and think they're going to do a little bit worse. So there's a lot of mixed emotions around Genius Sports right now when it comes to the analysts. These SPACs, the growth stocks, the small caps, they are very, very sensitive to analyst expectations. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the guidance that the company issues is like chop liver when it comes to some of these analysts. Uh, you know, if a company misses, you've seen what happens to them. They get killed. As far as business operation goes, guys, they killed it. I mean, look at this. They signed over 30 new exclusive league partnerships. 
uh, with big companies too. They expanded partnerships with the Danish soccer to include live data tracking and analytics. They announced strategic partnerships with leading sports books. Guys, look at this. DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, PointsBet, MGM, uh, you know, Sports Illustrated, Win, Golden Nugget, Hard Rock, Barstool, everything, guys. They did very, very well when it comes to actual operations. Now, I want to point something out because I saw a stat that was super interesting, guys. Like I said in my last video, their business model ingrains them, like literally embeds them in the infrastructure of online gambling and sports betting. Not necessarily online gambling, sports betting. That's a big industry. You guys all know that. It's going to grow uh, you know, over the course of the next couple of years. However, the Omicron variant comes out and it scares everybody to death because what happens if COVID ramps back up again and gets crazy like it was? Sports shut down. Sports shut down. Online sports betting stocks don't do well. So I think it was a, a perfect storm for that right around earnings for them to get killed. Now, do I think it was an overreaction? Yeah, I'd say so. 60%, guys, it wasn't that bad. They have literally grown revenue at 30% year over year for the last three years, and they're expected to grow revenue at around 40% until the end of 2022 at least. So they are honestly projected to do pretty dang well. The issue was the EBITDA. Guys, their EBITDA, like I said, is expected to do right around break even. If you take a look down here, guys, they're raising their group revenue guidance for full year 2021. Uh, so they've got fourth quarter left from 255 to 260 million to 257 to 262 million. So it's not a big jump there. They're only raising their guidance about 2 million on both the bottom end and the top end. But nonetheless, they're still raising guidance. That's what you want to see, company that's growing revenue faster than expected. Uh, and again, equating to over 70% year-on-year growth. That's exceptional, guys. That's really, really good. A company growing revenue at 70% year-over-year is very strong, especially when they have a history of growing really quickly. Now, one of the most important things that I think we need to highlight and look at is the share buyback that the directors did. So guys, Genius Sports Insiders came out and said, the share price is eight bucks. We'll buy the share at that price. Obviously showing an immense amount of confidence in their company, uh, you know, with the willingness to buy more shares back. Now, it's not like they're buying a ton, guys. I think they've got like 190 something million in their outstanding shares, and they are only purchasing about 280,000, 290,000. But nonetheless, still a decent amount of shares that they're taking off the market. As you can see here, guys, uh, 25,000 are going to the chairman of the board, uh, 50,000 to the CEO, about 7,500 to the director, um, 100,000 to the independent director, and another 100,000 to one of the other independent directors. So really, really interesting to see them come out with that share buyback right after the stock jumped or dropped 60%. Uh, real quick, guys, let's jump over and look at one more thing before we jump into the chart. This is what I think could be the potential issue for Genius Sports moving forward. Uh, guys, like I said before, these SPACs are really sensitive to analyst expectations. And with all of the things going on, like inflation and um, you know, the, uh, the coronavirus and just all the, all the different, uh, you know, issues that are going on, uh, the fears of market crashes, stocks like this, they've got to fix this issue right here. If you look at their revenue growth, they've got really good revenue growth. Okay. In 2018, they did 87 million. Then they did 114, 150, and then 225 in their trailing 12 months. But their gross profit is not so good guys. Really nice revenue growth horrible gross profit and net income. Look at the gross profit when they did 87 million in 2018, they did 35.8 million in gross profit. So that's like 40 something percent. That's pretty good. But in 2019, they did 114 million and only 25 million in gross profit. 150 in 2020 and they did the exact same amount that they did in 2018 and they lost 175 million in their trailing 12 months. Now, again, I know sports was shut down. There was a lot of issues there and, and whatever. But with these stocks, guys, you got to keep an eye on them. Like I've said before, with these SPACs, you have to be super careful. They are very risky, guys. 
I only put a very small percentage of my entire portfolio into these SPACs. Like I would say 80% of all of my portfolios is in like blue chips, you know, high value growth stocks, uh, you know, not even value stocks, but big, big companies, right? Safer, you know, more reliable stocks. I'm willing to take the risk on, on, on stocks like this, and I'm willing to bet on Genius Sports because I like Genius Sports and I think they've got a ton of potential moving forward, but you got to keep an eye on the gross profit. Look at the net income as well, guys. They lost $25 million in, in 2018, then it went to 40, back down to 30, and 553 in their trailing 12 months. Now, I don't know why it jumped so much there in their trailing 12 months, probably something to do with them going public. I have no idea. Something to look into, but guys, you've got to look at uh, you know, the, the gross profit, the net income and the free cash flow, the free cash flow is super negative too, but it was positive the last prior three years. So I would watch those things. It's kind of like DraftKings where their losses just keep widening. You know, that can only happen for so long before something's got to give. So, but let's go ahead and jump over and take a look at the chart guys. Uh, real quick before I do, I've looked at a lot of price targets over the last couple of days. Um, and it's really polarizing. Some analysts have, you know, I saw one, the most bullish case at $27. And I saw the most bearish case at around $15. But the average was still $21.50. So looking at the price right here, guys, at $8, that's a lot of upside. That's more than 100% to get to $21. Uh, you know, if you want to be dead spot on about it, I think that would put you at... Let's see. Yeah, 157% upside. So, and I absolutely think Genius Sports will get to that, you know, $21 price target. I just don't know when. I do think that if we can get back above $10 within the next couple of weeks, I think you'll see $20 rather quickly because I think if you can get over $10, back test that level, you'll see 15 like that. If you don't get over $10, though, I think you're going to see exactly what's happened with Lightning E-Motors, PaySafe, and so many of these SPACs that fell under that $10 uh, NAV price after the merger was complete, and they have never came out of it. Lightning E-Motors came out of it for a few days and couldn't backtest the top of the level and fell right back below it again. So keep that in mind. Uh, this right here is bad, guys. I mean, this when you have more red than you do green and the green days are really weak, that's bad. That's really bad. And so, um, you know, it, it, look at look at what happened today, guys. You, you, you fall. You think you might find a bottom. You try to back test 10. You back test it as resistance. You fall. You think you find a base. And then it closes at the lowest level it's ever closed at today. That's really, really bad. Now, if we take a look at the RSI, the lowest level of relative strength that this asset has ever seen. Same thing with the uh, negative momentum on the MACD, lowest levels it's ever seen. Now you are losing negative momentum and you could be starting to build positive momentum, but you could just start to lose it. It trades sideways, gets a couple of days of positive momentum and then keeps dumping again or at the very, very minimum, just trading around in this area like from, you know, eight bucks to six bucks to eight bucks so you got to be careful with that if you already own it yes obviously these are great prices to average down on if you have conviction in the stock for the long term because it will substantially cut your cost if you got in over that 15 dollars level if you don't own the stock right now there is zero reason why you would ever buy it right here because there's no indication that it's going to turn around and see a major reversal there's a couple of things that might imply a major reversal in the future, but we've got to get a confirmation low. We've got to get, you know, coinciding variables that are showing us that the asset will reverse. If it, guys, if it like, uh, you know, starts to run up and test that $10 level, we could eventually over the next couple of, you know, weeks, if you're patient, bullish divergence could develop and then we could have an edge. I want to point a couple of things out. This is a pretty harmonic level, guys. I mean, if you take your fibs from here to here, 1618. So what would that make it? It would make it a bullish butterfly from here to here to here. 
and that puts you right at the 1618, and that's a, uh, your, B, your B to C projection is also a harmonic level at the 3414. Um, if you were to take it from here to here, the this low to the all-time high, the 113, 113%, 113% retrace, excuse me. So what would that make it on a bigger time scale? It would make it a bullish shark pattern. So this is actually a pretty harmonic level down here, guys, but you can't enter right at the pattern completion zone because what you typically want to see, you want to see your first reaction low. So we could absolutely catch a reaction here and then say, it, you know, back test that level or even pulls back, even back to the same level for a confirmation low and then goes, that's what we want to see. Because if we let it do this, this is where bullish divergence could develop. And then we could have multiple coinciding variables that the asset is going to reverse. We could have the bullish uh, butterfly, the big bullish shark pattern, uh, you know, multiple harmonic levels in this area at your fib nodes, and then confirmation low. So the bottom's in bullish divergence. You see what I'm saying? So when stocks do this, you don't want to just buy them because they dump. That's like one of the biggest mistakes I see investors make is a stock will dump super far and they'll buy it because it's a way lower price. I would rather see you dollar cost averaging into it than doing that because when you just buy it after it dumps and it keeps dumping or it trades sideways for a while, a lot of people can't handle it and they think it's going to keep going so they, they end up selling. So wait until you get stuff that is like clear indication because at that point then you've got a ton of confidence then you can set your stop loss below the confirmation low and you've got a really good low risk trade uh, that could do very well so overall guys i think the price target at 21 bucks is more than fair on my account i think it actually could do much much better than that over the course of the next couple of years i love the price down here at eight dollars but i know it could go lower um, but it absolutely could pivot and turn as well so we just got to wait and see what follow through price action we get so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a licensed stockbroker. Always do your own research and due diligence. Come join us at the Patreon if you want to be part of an amazing family. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.